going to be talking about kind of a beginner's guide to AI chatbot, which is a new and interesting topic that I don't think we've covered before. So to get started, we want to give you a little overview of what you can expect for this presentation. Today, we're going to be going over AI chatbots, including their pros and cons, some concerns that chatbots can come with, and also how they actually work. And chatbots themselves are very interesting, and they actually try to mimic human action and can have emotions, which computers cannot have. We hope that this lesson leaves you with a better understanding of what chatbots are and kind of gives you something new to think about. So to begin, it's important to understand what AI is. And AI stands for artificial intelligence, which is the simulation of human intelligence and their processes by machines. And specifically, when we talk about artificial intelligence, we're talking about computer systems and technology. Some specific applications of AI include things such as expert systems, natural language processing, speech recognition, and machine, machine vision, though there are many other applications out there as well. In essence, AI is a computer attempting to mimic how a human acts and thinks. Now, in terms of chatbots, chatbots are computer programs that simulate and process human conversation. And this can either be written or spoken. It allows humans to interact with devices that are digital if they were communicating with a real person. So it's just simulating that experience of a conversation between human beings. And chatbots themselves can be simple programs that deliver basic conversations, or they can be highly capable and can have full-blown smart conversations where kind of intelligent language and topics are being discussed. Now, putting those two things together, AI and chatbots, an AI chatbot is different from regular chatbots because we can learn more from chatbots as we use it. And it gains knowledge from us. It learns what we want from it and the kinds of responses that we're expecting. And then it takes that information and sees how the conversation can go better and feeds it back to itself so it makes itself smarter by interacting with human beings. Are they liable for what they recommended? If they are, does the internet? So how does an AI chatbot actually work? It has an algorithm and it goes as follows. There are a few steps involved. Firstly, the user gives the chatbot a reply. Then the chatbot analyzes the request that you inputted. And then it tries to figure out what the user wants from it and then it will produce a reply accordingly. And the more input and detail it receives, the better the output it can give. So the more information you feed in, it can give you a more complex and in-depth output. And here, we've also provided a visual for you to describe kind of the process of a chatbot. So it's the input from a user, an analysis of the request, identify intent, and then you compose a reply, or sorry, the chat bo bot composes a reply. Now we're gonna go over the kinds of concerns that can come up when it comes to chatbots. According to Kaspersky, which is an anti-malware company, this is going to be a quote, in order to provide a personalized experience and intelligent answers, Chatbots often have access to a wealth of personal, personal customer data. And without the right precautions, this could pose a major threat and heighten the risk of key vulnerabilities. So that's kind of a good quote um, for thought. It can help us to kind of wonder, you know, what are the limitations? What are the concerns of using a chatbot? So just kind of that personal safety is top of mind when it comes to concerns. So it's important to keep in mind that the, thra the threat is not the chatbot itself, but in the person that is smart enough to infiltrate the chatbot or company using the technology. 
So if someone can access company information, then they can actually see your personal information through the chat bot. And that's why it's always a good idea to have some sort of anti-malware on your devices. So most of the time you can have trust in well-known and reputable companies, and it's not the chatbot that they're providing you, that's the issue, but it's the risk of someone such as a hacker actually compromising your privacy. Now you might wonder, should I actually be concerned about this? It's important to note that there isn't really anything to be concerned about when it comes to the chatbots themselves, but it's about the person making the chatbots and kind of how they manage the information that you give them. For example, if a user trains a chatbot to spread misinformation, then it can cause severe consequences as misinformation will be spread to whoever the chatbot interacts with. So it's also important to always remember not to take everything a chatbot says seriously or as the whole truth, kind of as you would with any information you find on the internet. It's always good to be slightly skeptical to protect yourself and the people around you. And on top of that, you always want to do your own research to verify information. So in kind of understanding who's regulating the chatbots, who actually makes them and manufactures these devices? It's interesting to note that chatbots have been around for quite some time now, and there has been more recent buzz about them because of the biggest and possibly the smartest chatbot that has come out recently, which is called ChatGBT, which was made by the company OpenAI. Aside from OpenAI, there are many companies who are able to make chatbots. We've listed a few of the biggest companies below, including Econometrics, Suscom Solutions, Yellow, and Brocoders. In terms of the biggest chatbots, there are many large chatbots that are out there, but the most well-known ones currently are ChatGPT, Natomi, and Replica. These three chatbots are very popular at the moment, and they have different uses, and therefore they're popular for different reasons. To begin with ChatGPT, OpenAI launched this technology on November 30th, 2022, so it's only a few months old. And the purpose of this AI chatbot is that you can ask anything and receive a multitude of responses. It is very similar to talking to an informational and very intelligent human being, and it's coded to be able to hold a conversation. Though, of course, with all technology, there come limitations, and sometimes it cannot respond to questions worded a specific way. Now there's also Natomi, which is very popular in terms of customer service. This chatbot is paid and it caters towards customer service that comes in more than a hundred languages. So it's very conversation and communication oriented. The technology or the chatbot can be customized any way the consumer would like it to be. And this is where the customer service side comes into play. For example, it can be programmed to answer any frequently asked questions and can be of service in terms of helping customers. Now there's also a chatbot called Replica, which is known as the AI companion that cares for people. It's a personal chatbot companion and it is powered by artificial intelligence, just like the other chatbots. Replica is specifically made for anyone who wants a friend with no judgment, no drama, or social anxiety involved. You can actually form an emotional connection, share laughter, or chat about anything you would like with the Replica chatbot. And it's also interesting that Replica is unique to each of its chatbots, just like each person who download, downloads the application is unique. Reacting to your artificial intelligence's messages will help them learn the best way to hold a conversation with you and what about. So it kind of develops its own personality, similar to how every human being has a different personality. Nobody's the same. And as such, the replica will um, adapt itself to be best suited to you and your needs. So you might be wondering, really, what is the fundamental purpose of a chatbot? 
So we've listed a few here for you. Firstly, chatbots number one use is for companies to capture leads that may have been lost. Chatbots also don't have to be paid, so companies can use them to answer questions about their company at all times of the day. And they're also a very cheap and effective way of having almost an employee type work nonstop. So it's really a way of maximizing efficiency and using technology to the best of its abilities. And now we wanted to present a little example of a chatbot actually being used. So if you look to the right of the screen, there's an image. And this is an example of the Rideshare app Lyft, which uses chatbots to have better customer service. Hmm. The app will ask you many questions and then it expects you to answer. Then based upon your answer to those messages, the app will reply something to you. Chatbots are used every day, millions of times at all times. And every time we use one of them, the information gets sent back and makes them smarter and smarter, which makes our lives a little bit easier. So you can see here, this person is interacting with the Lyft chatbot. It's asking, do you need a ride? You can take a Lyft for a welcoming, affordable and memorable ride. And then you just have to click on request a ride. And then it'll prompt you and it'll ask you more questions. What kind of ride do you want? Where do you want to go? And then you can even respond to it. So it'll tell you details such as the car type or what you should look for or where the person is located. And then you can just respond by saying, oh, I'll be there soon. So it's very similar to a conversation that you would have with another human being. Now, of course, we're also going to go over the pros and cons. To start with some of the benefits, firstly, they are highly versatile. As seen in prior slides, chatbots can be used in so many different scenarios to meet many different needs. Next, companies save money when they use a chatbot instead of paying a customer service agent. It also can save customers time as many questions can be redundant or kind of frequently asked. That's why they have FAQ sections. And instead of sitting on hold and waiting for a person to answer, you can get your question answered quickly and effectively. And it's also possible to visually see the growth of the chatbot um, and the growth or sales caused via a chatbot. So it's very easy to measure the effects of using a chatbot and see how it can benefit companies and individuals. And then here are just a few other listed examples. You can save on costs, enhance customer engagement. You can contextualize support to customers. You can measure your performance. You can save time and you can use it in many different scenarios. And finally, some of the negative aspects of chatbots. Firstly, you may lose the person-to-person -person feeling if you're dealing with customer service. A lot of us might prefer talking to someone over the phone and really having that connection. And that's something that can be lost through chatbots. Sometimes answers can be redundant or will not be exactly what you're looking for. Or if you're asking about a very specific scenario that is just unique to you, you may not be able to get your answer. Also, chatbots can be quite pricey to purchase on your own. For example, they can be upwards of 25 grand and not everybody can make use of a chatbot. Just like any form of technology, it's not necessarily suitable to everybody. And a few more pros and cons for the pros. If you have a human chat, you can have a personalized human experience. You can understand complex queries and you can also um, it enables you to have greater choice for sales and capturing leads. In terms of cons, sometimes there's 12 hours plus coverage per day being expected, meaning it requires a large team and a significant number of employees. It has a higher cost and it can't handle as many chats at once as AI and therefore response times can be slower. In terms of chatbots for the pros, there's a very fast response time. It's a lower cost overall in the long run to serve the customers. You can handle an unlimited number of conversations at once. And it's also great for repetitive inquiries and kind of frequently asked questions. But some cons are that it's unable to handle complex questions. It can sometimes be repetitive or annoying or frustrating for customers, and it doesn't have a personal human touch. 
And then if we do a hybrid model, which mixes together human chats and chat bots, it's kind of the best of both worlds. It's inefficient when it's scaled. So if you have your human team and then you also are able to support that team with chatbots, then it can become more effective. But on the downside, it can be complex to get right to find a balance between human and chatbot. And also it requires a higher traffic volume to justify both channels. So that concludes the presentation today. We wanna to thank you very much for listening and joining. And if you would like to learn this lesson with a Cyber Seniors Mentor, please go to the website or call the phone number to register for a one-on-one -on -one phone or web session. And we also do have tech drop-in sessions if you have any questions that are unrelated to today's topic. And this runs every Thursday from 2 to 3 p.m. Eastern time, and everyone is more than welcome to join. So now I believe Gabriel is going to give some additional information, and then Summer is going to direct us to what's next. Mm -hmm.